Welcome, my dear students, to this English class with me, your tutor, Alcino Secose. Today, we are going to continue with the topic that is uh, the drama section that is the importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde. So we have learned a little bit about the social context, the background of the author and so on and I hope that you find that useful to understand the text and now we are going to uh, take a look at a very short summary but I hope you would take time to read it and try to make sense of the text uh, yourself. So here is a brief plot summary. Now we find that the play opens in uh, a London flat and that, that two people, in fact best friends, were discussing. They were talking about uh, the prospect of uh, getting married, they were talking about discussing a lot about marriage and love, the concept of love as well. And here uh, we are also learned that uh, the, these two best friends are Bunbury and Ernest. Now, what is Bunbury here? Bunbury here is represented by Algernon, who had invented that uh, person, a fictitious person, uh, in order to escape his responsibilities. So, a Bunburyist is, is a person who, who does exactly that. And here again, the Ernest is invented by uh, Jack in order to escape his responsibilities in the country. So that's why he calls him, LG calls him a Bumberist and it is also very fitting that he is being called as Ernest in the city and very ironic as well. So that is what we find here and these two people were uh, having all those conversations, talking about uh, love and marriage. At the same time, now they are also preparing. In fact, LG was preparing to receive his aunt, that is Lady Bracknell. And the entry of Lady Bracknell is also very interesting. I hope you would uh, take time to notice that. Now, uh, when Lady Bracknell enters, she she, she visited along with uh, uh, Gwendolyn. She visited along with Gwendolyn, who is her niece. Now, we get to understand here from uh, the mannerism, the behavior, that Lady Bracknell is a very domineering person and does uh, say exactly what he meant to say. And the humor, a lot of humor is also being brought out in the character of Lady Bracknell for the fact that she said exactly what she meant to say at the same time, it's, it is outrageous in the situation. So that is what we find here. Um, Again, she had gossiped a lot about what is uh, going on in the society, in fact, about marriage again. Her sole concern is to get Gwendolyn married to a respectable person. So all these kinds of things are being, uh, are, can be understood within the subtext of the play. Now, we understand that prior to the entry of Lady Bracknell, uh, Jack wanted to propose, or Ernest wanted to propose to Gwendolyn, and Gwendolyn, uh, so here, when Gwendolyn arrived with Lady Bracknell, uh, in order to distract, or in order to give time to uh, Jack and Gwendolyn to discuss about the prospect of marriage here again, or their engagement, uh, LG distracted Lady Bracknell to to go to the music room so that these two people can have time to talk. So that is the kind of the, uh, the relationship between uh, Jack and Ernest that we also find here. Now, so that, that is a brief summary of our uh, play. Let's take a look at the characterization. The protagonist or the hero here is John or Jack Ernest Worthing JP. So he's the protagonist, the hero. The initials, the initials in his name suggest that he is a person who is working in the area of justice, a man who keeps uh, peace, maintains peace. And he's res a very responsible, respectable person in the country. People look up at him. And in fact, he is the ward of, uh, or the guardian of uh, Sicily. So that is what we find here. He has a lot of responsibilities to be carried out at uh, in his country home. And that's why we learned that he has invented this fictitious character called Ernest, his brother, who is always lending into trouble, who is a good-for-nothing person. So on that pretext of him, that fictitious person getting into trouble, uh, he would go to the city in London and discuss or talk with um, with LG, and at this point of time, we understand that LG also know Jack. Uh, he knew Jack, we can say, 
as earnest. So those are some of the uh, uh, dramatic comedy that we can also find here. Now, um, he lives in Hertfordshire, where he has a country estate, and in that country or in that uh, country a part of England, he is known as Jack. In London, he is known as Ernest. Now, we understand that throughout the conversation that is played out by these two characters uh, in the first part of the scene, we understand that his parentage, in other words, uh, Jack's parentage is not known. His lineage is not known. And he later on, he revealed that he was found, he was abandoned in a clock room in a suitcase. And that was the mysterious things that is also connected with uh, how he was adopted by Mr. Thomas Cardew and that he is he has now become the guardian of his granddaughter, that is Cecily. You remember when they were discussing about the cigarette case here and the mysterious things about uh, who is Cecily, the question about her, all these things unfold in the play. Now, he is deeply in love with his friend uh, Algernon's cousin, that is Gwendolyn Fairfax. And in fact, Al Algernon accused him of uh, acting like a married person, mar so in love with this Gwendolyn that he is acting like he's already married to her. So those are some of the uh, things that we find in the characterization of uh, Jack Worthing. Algernon Moncrief, the, one of the, even though the, the protagonist here is uh, Jack or Ernest, interestingly, many famous quotes are quoted from the lines of or from the dialogues of Algernon. So we can understand here that he is the secondary hero, but at the same time, uh, his witty criticism or his witty dialogues are again uh, the mouthpiece. He is a character that is the mouthpiece of the author, that is Oscar Wilde. And he's a very charming person, uh, uh, an idle person. Remember, we discussed a little bit about patriarchy and how the uh, gentleman section of the people in the society are, and rich privileged people are given to, in, given to a lot of idleness, at the same time uh, keeping up with a lot of uh, refined mannerism, decorative behavior. So he behaved in such a manner. He's the nephew of Lady Bracknell, cousin of Gwendolyn Fairfax. And we already know that now he is the best friend of Jack Worthing, whom all this time, at this point, that point of time, in fact, is known to him as Ernest. Now, Algernon is very brilliant. That's what we can say here. Remember, we have discussed a little bit about all those criticisms um, against the society and those most of those quotes are the dialogues of Algernon. He is also very selfish, take the example of the scene of cucumbers and so on, and very um, amoral as well. We will discuss that in detail. And given to making delightful paradoxical epigrammatic pronouncements, remember it is also about witty conversations. He's always given, in the conversation you would find that he's always trying to come back with a good comments or uh, in a witty, clever manner. So that is what we find. He ha has also invented a friend called Bumberyist, which we know now. And these are some character traits that are very similar to uh, Jack Worthing. Now, Gwendolyn Fairfax, we, G Algernon's cousin, Gwendolyn, and Lady Bracknell's daughter, in fact, Lady Bracknell's daughter. Gwendolyn is in love with Jack, whom she knows as Ernest. All these times, even, you remember, uh, Ernest in the city. So, even Gwendolyn thought that it is the person Ernest who is in love with her. A model and arbiter of high fashion and society. We would find that she is also, uh, here, I, w I need you to take a look at the role of our Gwendolyn Fairfax from the perspective of the author here, how he has portrayed it. Remember, it is a patriarchal society, but he's also criticizing that society. So here is a reversal of roles in, that we see in the play here. So Gwendolyn, instead of uh, a woman being meek and docile, she is a, a, a person or having a personality who does not want to be controlled. Remember, even when uh, Lady Bracknell asked her to come and sit next to her. She said, I'm comfortable here and so on. So those kind of things that we find here and that she would uh, always like to improve. So that kind of an independent spirit that we find in Gwendolyn. She's sophisticated, intellectual, cosmopolitan. In other words, very modern in uh, her perspective. 
and also very pretentious. Remember, we are talking about outward appearances. Gwendolyn is obsessed with the name Ernest, all because she thought that, in fact, the name Ernest here is very significant because it is referring to a person who is very serious and who is very honest. So that is again the irony here. She is also having this, uh, she has pictured in her mind, in fact, that she would marry a person by the name Ernest only. So uh, again, the, the context of marriage here, uh, the idea of getting married to uh, an honest person is also being revealed here. So that is the character of Gwendolyn Fairfax, Cecily Cardew, Jack Sward, the granddaughter of the old gentleman, Mr. Thomas Cardew. Like Gwendolyn, she is also obsessed with getting married to a person called Ernest. And remember, in the mysterious case of uh, who is Cecily, this all has also intrigued Algernon to fall in love with Sicily. So that is what we find here. She maintains a diary and um, at 18 she is supposed to inherit a great wealth. So uh, she is actually very, a very rich lady and representing the upper class. She, is, uh, she has her own governess and is very well learned. Now Lady Bracknell is uh, again the antagonist we can say here. She is a very proud aristocratic, very dogmatic in her, uh, in, in, in her perspectives we can say and domineering aunt and Gwendolyn's mother. Lady Bracknell married well she had married well and she expected her daughter to get married to a rich person. So that is why you, you will find that uh, she objected to the marriage of uh, Jack or Ernest and Gwendolyn. Through the figure of Lady Bracknell, Wilde manages to satirize the hypocrisy and stupidity of the British aristocracy. That is what we find here. How marriage is being uh, viewed only as a business, how marriage is being viewed only as an alliance, or how marriage is being viewed only as to climb up the social ladder. So, uh, in fact, from her dialogues in the play, we get to understand her idea of marriage as well. Now let's talk about the theme here. The theme is all about love and marriage. And in, it is also using this uh, theme, the motives here is also to satirize the constitution of marriage, how marriage is being viewed around that time. And in well satire of English aristocracy, marriage, has, marriage often has little to do with love. They do not think that a person should fall in love and then get married. But remember, I have already mentioned that marriage is being viewed only as a business. In fact, even LG said that it is a very boring thing. A marriage proposal is very definite, very boring, and so on. So that is how marriage is being viewed. And in some case, take the case of Lady Bracknell, who married a rich person, and that is a very business-like again. And in fact, to climb up the social status or to maintain their social status. That's what we find here. And so in these kind of cases, uh, love has nothing to do with marriage here. But in the characters, within the characters, we find that even um, Jack is willing, in fact, willing to go to a great extent to changing his name to Ernest in reality to, in order to marry Gwendolyn and so, uh, marry Gwendolyn and so on, all for the sake of love. Now, marriage is merely an alliance or social status. I hope you would take note of that because that is actually very important in the theme here. And the pursuit of marriage and the game of love were two different things. The game of love that is, uh, you remember, these two best friends are in love with two different people. At the same time, their idea of love and its association with marriage is an interesting facet to the theme here. We will discuss that in detail. But Wilde reversed the role. Remember, we talked a little bit about reversed role here. At that point of time, men were gentle, men were uh, expected to act very gentlemanly and they were the privileged lot compared to the women and women do not have any say to their marriage. In fact, if a proposal comes, uh, she is expected to take it up. So that is what we find here. But remember, we have also seen in the character of Gwendolyn how she wanted to stand up for her own when it comes to love. So this is the transition that we were talking about in the uh, Victorian society here. The old values being represented by uh, people like Lady Bracknell, who thought that marriage should be uh, made in such a way that the uh, 
she would be able to get rid of Gwendolyn to a rich person and that her future would be set and that she has no concern about love. In fact, in the play, you would find that she has a list in order to, uh, she has a list for suitors in order to match it up to their, uh, to her daughter for marriage. So that is the kind of a business-like situation that we find when it comes to the idea of marriage. But Weld reversed role Petraki to more dominant roles in his characterization that women were portrayed more dominant. So even Lady Bracknell, the fact that she is looking into the matters of the marriage of her daughter, that is also a, a, an interesting facet. And Cicely and Gwendolyn both willing to get married for the sake of love. Now, here is the marriage analysis, the marriage that were being discussed, the idea of marriage that was discussed in the play. Bachelor's establishments, the servants invariably drink champagne for its superior quality. Now, this is a very interesting thing. When Algernon asked uh, the servant, Lane, whether or why champagne, champagne gets uh, depleted, we can say, gets over, or the consumption is more, what happened here is that Lane replied that because the bachelor people, uh, they, when they throw parties, they are more extravagant, they go for the best qualities, whereas compared to a domestic scenario uh, between a husband and a wife, they would go for a poor quality. So even the, the servant, the irony here is that the servant do not bother to drink or consume more. So interestingly, when he put it in that way, what did Algernon say? Is marriage so demoralizing as that? In other words, compared to a bachelor, they are more extravagant. But when it comes to the real situation, the picture of marriage here, it becomes very domestic, it becomes very uh, mundane and so on. So there is no excitement according to him and that uh, when did marriage tend to be so demoralizing, he questioned. Lane's belief of, or, of marriage here. I believe it is a very pleasant state. Marriage is a very pleasant state according to him. His ignorance is also reflected here. And he, we know that he married once probably out of love, but separated. And what did uh, Elger Algernon has to say about that? Again, the social structure or the social structure play we find here. Lower class marry carelessly. Lane's view on marriage seems somewhat lax. Lax here means carelessly. He is marrying carelessly. That's what he thought. And that they, they, the lower class people are expected to keep up the pretense as well, to show high sense of moral responsibilities. If lower class don't set an example, what on earth is the issue of them? They seem as class to have absolutely no sense of moral responsibility. Uh, so, the irony is again the critic, the, the fact that even the high class um, society in the take the uh, case of marriage being viewed only as a um, ladder, social ladder or as a matter of business and that Algernon's, in Algernon's view, again, marriage, the definite a uh, marriage proposal is very definite and that after marriage, the excitement of uncertainty is lost. So that romanticism is lost and one begins to live a very predictable, normal life. So that was the fashion of the day as well. And at that point of time, uh, he also pointed out that many married people are just simply showing outward appearances and it is going on. Uh, a whole lot more in London. And that's why he also pointed out divorces are made in heaven, real separation took place after death. We have discussed that and that according to LG again, girls never marry the men they flirt with. Making the point here again that it was a patriarchal society, women do not have much say in their marriage and that even though they were in love, they usually they were usually made to get married to uh, a person not of their choice. So that is what we have here. The marriage of Lady Farquhar is very interesting from the gossip of uh, Lady Bracknell, from the point of view of Lady Bracknell. She flirts with her husband outrageously, which is something that she finds delightful to watch, whereas Algernon finds it uh, very disgusting, we can say, because that is such a show of public affection. And uh, because perhaps you also know that, he also knows that it is, in reality, it is not so. It is not pleasant, it is not even decent. Lady Bracknell, such a nice woman, so attentive to her husband, public appearances. It is simply washing one's clean linen in public, says LG. Now, Lady Harbury, according to Lady Bracknell, after her husband's death, what happened here is she has changed completely. 
this is a, an interesting uh, part that we find here, or humor as well. According to her, she's living entirely to, for pleasure now, after her husband's death. So maybe uh, women at that point of time, married women were given a tight ring and there was not much freedom to, uh, given to them. LG, I hear her hair has turned quick gold from grief. A very clever, witty dialogue again. Uh, she has, uh, she was said to be um, younger in her appearance, looking younger in her appearance, and that her hair, instead of uh, going gray or turning gray, she is now, it is now golden. That's what LG said. After the liberation from the constitution of marriage, she seemed happier and freer. So that is the, the, the picture of marriage that we find here. You would find that in the discussion between LG and um, Jack Ernest, we find that they have different opinions, but both of them want love to go along with marriage. Marriage is extremely problematic and therefore requires Bunbury. That's what we have here. Views marriage as dull and business-like. In married life, three is company and two is none. So that is the kind of uh, things that we find here. Jack, sa Jack says that he's smitten, in fact, he's smitten with uh, Gwendolyn and he is uh, willing, he cannot understand, comprehend the fact that there can be uh, three in the marriage and so on, and that he is to, to be loyal to this Gwendolyn. He promises in that manner. So that is the different aspects of marriage that we would find in this lesson. Take time to read your text and uh, make sure you enjoy it. And on that note, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.